Thank you. Oh, yeah, definitely quite exciting to see all these people growing more and more every year. So first of all, thank you for joining. Super incredible event. And um, also this year is very important here because we are celebrating 10 years since the first national summit. So yeah, it is very exciting. Uh, it was quite a long journey. So um, quite good opportunity to say thank you, everybody who was involved into this project since the beginning. Pipeline developer, Nextflow developer, committer. We're just using Nextflow, so really big thank you because uh, this is possible only by you at the end. So it's a collective project. It's not uh, something driven by a few people. And um, also it's quite, quite amazing to see how this idea managed to grow in such big uh, movement, uh, pipeline developer, adoption in the industry. And um, yeah. And the point is, the core idea is in the next flow to enable the deployment of scalable pipeline in a portable manner in different infrastructure, and above all, enabling scientists to focus about their work, the design. So all the goal, the vision next flow is to try to keep away all the complexity to deploy the pipeline and scale in different environments. So what, this is what is driving the technology. We want to, we want to continue to to deliver with this technology. The point is that uh, computation and data pipelines are becoming bigger and bigger, more complex, there are more cloud, more computational infrastructure, uh, more services, Kubernetes. So to tackle this challenge that is growing, we need to, uh, we want to uh, evolve this technology from a single tool to something that is more complex, it is an ecosystem of technology. So also Evan was mentioning this yesterday, and the idea to a specialized component that take care of very specific aspect of this challenge. Um, today I'm going to talk on a few of them, so of course about NetFlow, and then Fusion, and way how this company enable the scalability of this pipeline in the Vision NetFlow. Um, the first one, yeah, uh, is Fusion, is over, uh, no, operating system, not yet. <laughs> Uh, file system that we designed to enable the scalability of data pipelines in the cloud for data cloud native pipelines. And one, we need a specialized storage for data pipelines because uh, to scale pipelines, the problem is not computing. We have plenty of computing. It's just enough having a credit card to buy the computing. But the point is how we can use efficiently the computing power. And the bottleneck in data pipelines is not surprisingly, the I.O. This pipeline ingests terabyte of data, produce terabyte, of, uh, produce terabyte of data as well. So it's very important to be able to use the search in an efficient way. There are a lot of uh, file system, distributed file system for the cloud, but they point that they were not designed having the cloud in mind. So they are tend to be or they are expensive, or they are fixed location of both of them, and above all, add new services that you need to maintain. So it's not what we would like to have. Ideally, it would be much better to use object storage, like S3, that is a real file storage for native cloud. But the point is that there is a mismatch between the interface of object storage and the tools that we use in data pipelines because they are not designed to work uh, with object storage. And here we come with Fusion. Fusion is one thing that is doing is creating a transparent interface to allow to use object storage into your pipeline without having to reinvent the wheel every time. So just to give you a very simple idea, how does it work? This could be a, a basic task without fusion. Essentially, if you want to access a file over S3, you need to use the AWS S3 command uh, line to copy the data in your computer or in the container then you can run the tool, the tool uh, read this file, for example, and then produce another file, and then you need to copy back these into the cloud in the object storage. Um, basically, this is what Nextflow is doing for you when you use Nextflow with AWS Batch or S3 behind the scene, but even if this is down automatically, it's very inefficient. It does not scale well, produce a lot of redundancies. If you are using thousands of files for each of these, command, there is a separate authentication, so it's not efficient. Instead, what we can do with Fusion is transparent mapping <coughs> the data that is in the bucket 
to our local part. So if the data is my bug has some files, we can do, we can access it from the local part, from the local file system using slash fusion slash s3 my bucket and then the, the complete part. Behind the scene, this tool is taking care then to translate this to API call to S3 for you. So one side is much more simple to, to manage the data because it's delegated uh, to this uh, driver, but also what is important that is more efficient. And this is a simple representation of how could run pipeline usually using AWS batch maybe and uh, using the fusion driver. So next flow launch pipeline job into the cloud is run into a container and then there is your job. Here there is the fusion driver. The fusion driver run within the job container is not uh, installed into the compute node. So this is already a difference compared to other technology. And so essentially this piece of software is, is creating this adaption layer between your job and the S3 storage. But the other important thing is what happens in here. The fusion driver takes care to create a cache using the uh, node instant storage. So if the, this node pro, uh, bring, uh, use a very fast instant storage, like could be MVM disk or solid state disk, fusion driver is able to speed up uh, greatly in the performance of your pattern and execution because essentially what it's doing is working the local disk in a transparent manner and then moving the data when needed to the object storage. And so, again, there are plenty of different implementation fuse driver. We are seeing also this morning, GSFS, SFS, um, S3, SFS, I don't remember the name. But the point, there are so many, but the point is that fusion is optimized for data pipeline, a double room for next flow data pipelines. Uh, the most critical part, it is the idea to have a prefetching algorithm that uh, download the, uh, the data before it's written by your prog, by, by your tool. So this greatly speed up the access to the data. In the same manner, there is a asynchronous parallel algorithm that upload data in background. So make it much faster compared to other solution. And then there is a, another trick that apparently is simple, but is a game changer. I will show you later why. The ability to create symbolic link over object storage, something that is not natively supported by the object storage. And then finally, what is also very important, that there is really almost nothing to do to use this technology in your pipeline. Few lines, really two lines in your uh, next row configuration file. And uh, you don't need to store or configure the cloud. You don't need to con configure compute node, almost anything. Uh, and also remove the need to have a custom MEI when you want to deploy NextFlow and run into an AWS batch because usually you need to create a custom MEI to configure AWS command line tools. Using Fusion, this is not needed anymore. You can use a stock MEI. Um, so we wanted to compare, because this is a continuous uh, recurrent question, how is different Fusion compared to other similar technology? We made a benchmark comparing Fusion with Arclone, is a popular uh, technology that is doing something similar. And also Amazon AWS Mount Point that was recently uh, introduced the past year. Also this tool mount the S3 bucket over the local file system. We use uh, FIO, this is a popular file system benchmarking tool to compare the different uh, uh, performance across different operations. Reading file, sequential manner, a random manner, small file, large file, also writing file. Let's see the reading of small files. Here we can see in both cases, these three two have similar performance. Here, megabyte per second, so this is the true boot, the, how fast is the, the, the reading operation, the bigger is better, and the best one is our clone, 90,000 more or less megabyte per second, both in reading, uh, in sequential manner, in random manner. Then there is mount point, and then there is fusion that is 60,800 megabytes per second. Um, so here what we can see that all uh, the three tools benefit from the caching of the file over the operating system. Basically, since the file is very small, 
the Linux operating system is able to keep this in memory, and all these operations essentially are over the memory. So this is why our data are very similar to this number. Also, Fusion is a bit slower because it manages a second layer cache. So this adds a bit overhead. But we see the benefit of this caching system here. There is a huge difference when we read big data files that are very common in our pipeline. So when we need to read in a sequential manner 100 megabyte files, Fusion is able to read at 6,000 megabytes per second. Our clone, 85, so it's a huge difference. Mount point, 3.28, so uh, barely usable, I would say. Um, same figure, more or less, for random access, data, large data file over S3. Uh, Fusion is able to do a 2,200 megabyte per second, Air column 1.48, so it's not really comparable. Same things for, for mount point. Again, why so fast? Because uh, a Fusion download in parallel manner in a prefetching the data, storing locally, your tool work basically with the local disk. So if you know that's very fast local disk, your pipeline is going to be very fast over S3. Uh, something similar is happening also for sequential write and random write. Fusion is able to uh, write a file with 1,200 megabytes per second, error clone 137. Mount point we were not able to assess was crashing in our test. Finally, random write, also similar figure, error clone does not support and not even mount point support random write over, over S3. So here I think this should clarify why this tool is different from the other, because it's optimized to access large data file over S3, something that is not happening with other solution. And uh, we want to also to make a benchmark when, what happened when we run a real world pipeline. We benchmark uh, NF core RNSE pipeline using Amazon Batch, uh, using on-demand instances with S3, Amazon, FSX cluster, so a shared file system in the, in the cloud, and Fusion. Uh, also, we use the test profile of uh, an F-core pipeline. This means that basically uh, this is a uh, data set that is somehow similar to a real world use case. And here we are reporting the CPU hours, so how long run the pipeline. With S3, it's the slowest one, and we are expecting this more or less 100 hours to run this pipeline because there is a lot of data transfer. So, tend to be quite slow. And uh, using FXX is quite fast because we remove all the overhead on transferring the data, and this is uh, expected. And we can see that Fusion can be at par with FXX, even slightly faster. So both of them are twice faster compared to the, the use of just S3. But even more surprisingly, the result when we look into the cost of these three different technology. Uh, here we are reporting the cost to run the pipeline, so the compute cost, and then the cost of the storage to sort the data for one month, because maybe you want to retain the data over time, of course, or the result of the pipeline. And with the S3, uh, we spent $124. Uh, with FXZ, quite much more, because it's a separate service, tend to be quite expensive, and this, the, the cost was $293, and with Fusion, only 69 Here, <laughs> it's not, no. no, but wait, there is an interesting point. That, an interesting point that how is possible that this guy is cheaper than S3, because we say that Fusion is just an adapter layer of S3, so we should, it should be the same. So this is something that on which we spent some time to understand why it was going to be cheaper. It's cheaper because Fusion used symbolic links. So basically, you create much less redundant data in your pipeline. It is avoid to decrease the cost of the, uh, the, the storage. And why this is happening? Because uh, when you use S3, uh, you have the same input file that is used by, let's say, 10 tasks. You have 10 copies of the same file. If you are able to create the link, basically you are just moving the symbolic key and reference of the same file. So we have much less duplicated data into the pipeline. And also to, to show better this, uh, this mechanism, we compare different pipeline uh, 
and we uh, measure how much data we're pr producing. So RNA-seq, as three was more or less one terabyte of data, it used in Fusion, 90% less. SCRNSEq, 32% less. Atacsec, 44% less. Sarek is incredible. I, I, I was so, so surprised that I wanted to check twice the result. Is 61% less data is incredible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that the message is quite clear. I think you should not use S3 without fusion in your pipeline because you are just wasting money and time, essentially. Availability this technology is available for all three major uh, cloud providers. Uh, we consider Amazon S3 production ready. We are still working on Google Search and Azure Blob Search. It is available as a um, preview feature. And both of them can be used both using uh, Segura platform or Nextflow command line tool, just adding the configuration in your Nextflow pipeline. And uh, OK, so this is a fusion optimization the storage. Then the other point is about optimization the container. Container are pillar in our, in our data pipelines. Uh, and Nextflow was one of the first tools using container in data pipelines because allow us to capture all the dependencies into the, the workflow application and easily distribute to avoid all the mess to configure this, so this software in the target computing environment. So it's super important, but also changed dramatically in the last year how uh, containers are used into the pipeline. The beginning was just one container and a few tools, the pipeline also, they were more simple now pipeline much more complex and then there is this pattern to use a different container for each task. So in a pipeline you can have 20, 30, 40 different container and then maybe you need the container for Docker and the container of Singularity and then maybe you need also the container for ARM. Also this morning uh, the presentation of Amazon was mentioned about this. So it can become very complicated to manage all these packaging or container, maintaining a line, upload it to the registry, they have different credentials, so it's a quite, a, quite a mess. And somehow it's a paradox because containers were introduced to simplify the deployment pipeline. Now there is this new burden to maintain the container. Instead, with way what we are trying to push is a different idea. Instead of having containers that are monolithic assets or images built by somebody ahead of the pipeline execution, we want to push the idea that the container has a disposable resource that is created on demand so that we can also optimize the container for a specific job in your pipeline. Maybe you can create a container with a specific tool and for a specific CPU architecture where you want to run your container to get better performance. Also, define the container by specifying what I want in the container instead of thinking how to build the container. I don't want to think how to create a Docker file, all the that has to mm, tricky a uh, bash command. I want just to say I want this tool into this container. That is, and so this is more or less uh, the schema. How does it work with? Um, you can see here. Okay, this is a reputation next flow uh, uh, pipeline working into a compute node, and this launch job to run the job into some container. And basically, what it's doing is asking to wait, I need a container for this tool, for this platform, and uh, the user that is make, making this request. Then the container and wave collect all this information, interact with the wave to authenticate the user, and maybe also to authenticate the private repository that you may need in your pipeline to pull this container. So removing all this problem of managing the credential, and then can decide to all oh, argument container on demand or create a new container using Conda packages or Spark packages to send back the target container image name and the next loop use this name to pull the container. Here maybe the most important thing is that Wave is not a registry. It's not hosting images. It's not copying your container, but it's just a mediator, a broker that collect the information and decide which container should be used in your pipeline. Then the pipeline pull the container from your registry, essentially. And there's quite a lot of new things uh, when we from 
since when we introduced this technology in the past year, what we call Fritz container, the support for singularity, security scan to check all the vulnerability in your container, a new command line tool for way, but I won't focus on the last two, the support for multiple architecture. Again, also this morning, Amazon, uh, Brendan from Amazon was mentioning the need to have the ability to support new architecture, in particular ARM, because they provide a more co uh, cost efficient way for computing. Problem with is that to run uh, data pipelines on ARM, we need container that are compiled built for this architecture. And so this is a huge work because imagine all by a container, all Kunda tools need to be recompiled from one day to another is a huge task. Instead, what we are promoting here, a different idea, instead to compile all these uh, from one day to another, we can build on demand. If you need to one tool with Wave, you can say, I want this tool for this uh, CPU architecture, a Wave build the, this by a Kunda recipe for you on demand. And uh, okay, targeting different architecture, of course, this requires having Bioconda ECP or Conda ECP that are compatible uh, with ARM, the compile on this CPU architecture. Uh, not all of them are ready, but this is also why we are, oh no, I jump into another slide. Uh, we create a, a Sekera channel on Conda that provide uh, Conda ECP dedicated for NF core pipeline that compile on ARM. And these are available on true way. Second point, also to bring the support for Spark package manager uh, to Wave and next flow them. So why Spark also, again, this morning, the Amazon guy was, guy, Brandon, was talking about this. Um, because Spark as a, is somewhat similar to Conda, allows you to create a compiled packages uh, specifying uh, some package name, but he has a capability different. It is able to compile the tool for a very specific CPU architecture. So not just say for Intel or for ARM, but very specific CPU set. This is make it possible to optimize the tool for a very specific CPU uh, micro architecture. So if you are wondering how much you can gain, there is this interesting research paper, which they show that if you compile uh, the tool at the container for a very specific architecture, you can gain up to times the performance for that tool compared to a generic, to a generic platform. So now this is also integrated into Wave, so you can use Spark to, to create container on demand into this Wave. And finally, the demo, the most exciting part. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a bit more boring compared to Evan demo because he was using having a nice interface. This is going to be on the common line, but for some of you, it's going to be still fun. And um, what I wanted to mention also that now we have a common line tool for Wave that you can find on GitHub, be bigger. Here you can see um, this make it possible to use this service not just from Nextflow, but also like any other command line into your uh, terminal. You can find the releases page. page uh, there are pre-built binary for Linux, Mac, uh, Intel, Mac, uh, Silicon, and Windows. So once I install this, I will use virtual machine for this. Uh, let's clear. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, with to this computer. And the most basic operation that I can do let see the in way demo. Oh, not super comfortable. Um, what I can do with Wave, the most basic operation to access a container with Wave. To do this, I have the minus i, the sign for image, uh, that allows me to specify a container name, like for example Ubuntu, and this gives me the container name that make it, make it accessible through, through Wave. So I can use this with Docker like any other container. Docker run this guy, or just put this case. Oops. Uh, this is just pulling the container, so nothing, nothing magic is happening. I, obviously, I can pull also with just uh, from Docker instead of using Wave, but 
why should do this? Oh, and not super. Why should do this? But because if this were a private container, I could have been able to pull through the credential store into Sekera platform because we is uh, federated with Sekera platform is, is able to use your credential in your account to access your container. Also, an interesting thing that you can see that independently if I access this container from Wave or from Docker, I have exactly the same checksum. So this is to show that if you don't say to modify the container, the container does not change at all. It's just a different name to access exactly the same container image. But what if I want to really change this container, add the some, maybe some script that I need to be used in the container because I want to run a task with this. Let's say that I create a directory, which I have my scripts, and then I, uh, I want to create a script, my script, hello.sh, and then I just say, hello, I go, uh, look, ma, I'm uh, talking at summit. Okay, then what I do? I should build the container and then upload to a registry and then pull from data pipeline. Said so what I can do with Wave is manually Ubuntu, and then I want to specify that I want to use this directory as a new layer into my container. I can do this with minus minus layer and then my script. That's it, and this gives me the container name and now I can take it, dogger run this guy, is that one, yeah? And then sh minus c slash hello. Okay, this is doing exactly that thing. Oh, it didn't give execute permission, perfect. My script, but this is a good example to show how is fast the iteration with this. <laughs> yeah. I uh, have a new container, docker run, shbc, hello, sh. And again, syntax error. <laughs> again, you want to make running. Finally. Okay, again. Docker run. Uh, sh minus c slash hello. Finally. Oh. Okay. Uh, part the, the mistake, but this is also now getting apart, show how it's simple to iterate because we are not building the container. So when I run wave minus i layer, it's not building the container. The new script or all the content is directly is added during the pool. So this is the big difference. So why is better? Because imagine that you have 10 containers that need the same script. You need to build 10 containers just to add the one file or two files. These files are added every time this container is, at, is pulled by the pipeline. But maybe sometimes you really need a new container and you can do this with uh, the usual Docker file. So here, Ubuntu, and uh, I want to add a load.sh in user local bin a load.sh. And then I want to execute a load.sh as default. Okay, now to build this, I can use another option that is wave minus f, docker file. And then specify the context, the building context uh, that is all with this directory. Now we are really building the container. I have again a new name for the container, docker run. This, you see, and was Super, super fast. Yeah, exactly the same, because it was too fast. Yeah. So 
So if I jump into my mail, I uh, also animate that confirm the file that I just built the container, and there is the ID, the user, where the container is stored, the format, the platform, the time, what I use, the log, and also the security scan I was mentioning you before. I can jump here, I can see all the, uh, the security vulnerability in my container that I should try to fix, et cetera. So this gives you an idea that so I can modify on demand existing images, but also I can build on demand new images with a, the usual Docker file. But we say that it's not cool anymore using Docker file. We want to just use Conda packages. Conda is a fantastic package, package manager, a thousand or tools that are available. And I would like to just create a container saying I want to use the Conda package that is mm, web tools. 230. And this is creating uh, the container with bad tools. Docker run of this and then uh, what? Bad tools version. I made a mistake, repository. Oh, ah, yeah. Here. Okay, so that is. Um, <laughs> but somebody could say, but okay, but why should do this when there is Bioconda, no? There is already a collection of all Conda, uh, Docker images for each Bioconda tool because they made automatically. Well, the answer is that first, is only for Bioconda, this one channel in all the Conda. Uh, packaging system. So with this system, I can take any Conda package and create a container on the fly. Second, with Bioconda, a Biocontainer, there is one to one mapping. So one to one container. In this case, I can create a container with any combination of tools that are available in Conda. So I can do Conda uh, package that is bad tools, but also some tools, for example. Um, version, I don't know, 117. And again, I have a new container, and I can run like before, Docker run. Some tools. So this is much more flexible because you can create container with any combination tool that you may need to use in the task. You are not limited to the existing container and again, so we back to the point of heavy multi-platform container. I could create a container, now we are creating container for, uh, for Intel, because it's the default, because I'm running into an Intel computer, but I could specify that I want a container that is for ARM64. And this is enough to, to trigger the build for this container using Conda, a Conda package, and ARM architecture. Um, I could try to run, but if this is not working, is a good thing because I cannot run our container on Intel, this computer. And exactly, say exactly like that. The requested image platform is Linux ARM64, but we are running on Intel, so they show that that container is for, for ARM. So there's a great flexibility into this tool. You can combine and create container on demand, Docker file, Conda packages. Also, we added capability to do the same with Spark and Spark packages. And um, one more thing, one more thing is that you see that every time they run this, I uh, basically two numbers, that is the checksum of the build, so what represents the identity of the container, and this number instead, that is the identity of the request. Every time I run this, I have a different number that is because of different requests, but the container is exactly the same. So some, some users say, okay, this is cool, but I don't want to change every time the name of the container. I want a predictable name for this container so that I don't need to modify my pipeline configuration every time. Actually, you don't need to modify the pipeline configuration, not even with this system, because Nextflow is able to uh, use this uh, transparently. But the point is that how we can have 
stable name for this container created by Wave. It is what we are doing with the Freeze option, the Freeze container. So essentially, you are able to say, create the container and push to my own repository. So I can say build repo, and then um, you can specify your own repository, docker.io. I don't know, in my case, is PD Tommaso um, with demo. Oops, there is W more. And again, here it is. So basically, now you have the container that is your own repository. And you can repeat this as many times as you want. It's built only the very first time, the second, and third time, of course, it's cache. It is always the same container. So this makes it possible to have a predictable name for your container. You can take and then also maybe create a profile in your pipeline, always use this uh, container name. One more thing is that we say that we are able to build container with Conda, multiple platform, but there are also different uh, container runtime. The other is more popular, uh, Podman is compatible, but there is singularity. Singularity is very important for HPC world. <coughs> singularity is a completely different organization. Does it work the image file? How does it work the specification for the build of the container? So not super, not, maybe not everybody knows how to use, but the beauty of this that I can, for use, I can just say singularity and create a native singularity image file, push to a Docker registry, like if we're Docker container, but we are just using a registry to store the native image file, and then having singularity and then use it on demand. So the only difference that you see, that basically the name of the container that is returning as this prefix is Oras, the singularity knows how to know. Maybe I should clean up a bit the screen because it's singularity, exec, orasdocker.io, and then uh, this is bad tools. Here we go. So, okay, I already tried this. It's usually a cache local image. <laughs> but again, <laughs> here the, the important fact that we are not creating a Docker container and converting locally to singularity, but it's done transparently by the building system behind the scene. And uh, okay, we show how flexible it is to this technology, you know, command line tool, but the main point to use this with Nextflow pipeline. This is perfectly integrated into Nextflow. And we also add the new command into Nextflow to make this process a bit more transparent and to see what container are used by your pipeline. Uh, let's say that I want to see the, the container used in 20 core RNS NF that is not the NF core RNS seq that's a much smaller pipeline that we use for demoing. In this case, the spec command tells me the container then which this pipe, pipeline is using. This always use the same, uh, the same container for all the tasks because it defines the main configuration file. You see there are four tasks always using key.io RNSIC uh, container. But what if I want to use instead the Conda tool that each task, each model defined for this, for this, uh, into this pipeline? I could use nextflow config, and I can say wave enabled, true. And then wave strategy, strategy, conda. So this is enough to tell wave to use the conda directive when building the container. And then I can repeat nextflow spec, there in a second half, and now the container images become the one, no, become, Always the same. What a ah, there's a type on the config name. It's a bit different on typing on the podium. <laughs> okay. Take a bit more time. And now we have a, a separate container. <laughs> For each, for each different task. Okay, Salmo, yeah, first two, and then multi-QC, multi-QC task, pass-QC. And then also I could enable the 
uh, the freeze functionality, we, in it, no, we freeze true, we did repo c3 docker dot u with demo. And again, this is basically that the same thing, but you use the freeze, freeze functionality to have all with the same container name. We have also that uh, common line option in this format that allows you to create this output into next flow configuration file format so that you can take a copy as a profile and always use this container name. And um, okay, I, I think this show also the integration with next flow, I could just use next flow run now to run the pipeline with this configuration. And um, what else? Jumping back here, um, as of today, we have this uh, service that is up and running and available through www.segera.io. In the last year, we served nearly 100 million containers, so it's quite stable, working pretty well. Also, as of today, we are uh, introducing, announcing the availability of this tool, an uh, open source project that you can download from this GitHub repository and even contribute if you want. And we are going to, to make it available as an enterprise distribution for customers starting from next year. So plenty of different way to use WIG. There is no more excuse to not use it. <laughs> Let's jump into the last part there. Of course, we didn't talk much about NextFlow so far. Um, that is the pillar technology uh, into, into this ecosystem. Uh, the last month has been work uh, hard, uh, we work hard to, to smooth and make much more interoperable this technology with wave fusion. So not surprisingly, now we have also in Nextflow the capability to use uh, SPAC packages into, uh, into Nextflow. There is a new directive that is SPAC that is very similar to what is doing Conda. So essentially, you can define the dependencies using uh, SPAC and then you can run locally and the build happens locally or you can build this with wave like I was mentioning you before. Along the same manner, there is support for the architecture directive, so you can define what is the target architecture for the task, your pipeline. And not just the architecture, but also the microarchitecture for that discussion we were saying before, the capability to compile for a very specific CPU set your, your pipeline task. And again, we have take care to create the container on demand for this. Uh, Fusion is now first class uh, file system to your next row pipeline, supported by all, uh, almost all next row executor, the most important one, cloud executor, AWS batch, Azure batch, Google batch, Kubernetes, the different distribution, even local executor you could run using remote file system. This can be used for maybe running a pipeline into a CDU instance and scaling vertically. Also, we have the support for this to SLAR, LSF, a grid engine, HPC batch scheduler. This is quite interesting. So this brings to this possibility to use Fusion also on prem. And this is a reference also in the title of the presentation, Converged Computing. So this idea that um, cloud is becoming more efficient and becoming more HPC, but at the same time also HPC need to become more similar to the cloud. And this is a good converge, it's a good intersection using the object storage, maybe on-prem S3-like object storage, as a temporary uh, storage for your pipeline execution, like we can do into the cloud using Xflow and, and, and Fusion. Uh, we also have the capability to tag the scratch files using when using Fusion so that all dot command star files have this tag metadata, and then all temporary data is tagged with temporary, this makes it possible to have some automatic cleanup rule to remove all this data automatically uh, from your object storage. Uh, cloud cache plugin, I think you are running out of time. I, I can skip. A um, few words roadmap for next year. We are working quite a lot, interesting stuff. Um, we don't have enough time to see one by one, but the main idea, the general vision is to make Nextflow much more static type oriented programming language, or DSL, that is the most correct definition. Um, because now Nextflow is quite powerful, 
but it's completely a dynamic uh, programming environment. And this can be a bit complicated, uh, maybe to uh, predict uh, error and then maybe it happens during the pipeline execution. Instead, we want to make this experience much, much more solid using some static type compilation to have a precise error reporting, also to have much better integration with ID so that when you're writing the pipeline code, you, there is the other suggestion can tell, okay, you can do this, you cannot do that. Uh, other support for custom data type, and also to have a uh, well-defined workflow definition for the input and doubles of your pipeline so that it would be, be possible to compose also different um, workflow uh, in a semi-automatic manner. So I hope that give you a good overview of what is happening in the next, uh, next flow uh, world. And uh, above all, yes, the overall idea is to have a unified ecosystem and above all, a unique a unique mix of technology to deploy pipeline at scale in a portable manner. So always with the original vision to allow scientists to focus on their work and we remove all the complexity of this pipeline. Just a few seconds to say a big thank you all the people involved into this uh, technology, Sagara like Compute Team, Cider Team, Infra Team. <laughs> big thank you guys, you are fantastic. It is an honor to work with you. No. Excellent. Well, there are a lot of questions in Slack. Um, we might do just one, even though we're over time. Um, would a Fusion CLI be available in the future? Fusion CLI. But Fusion is a CLI. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that uh, Fusion to work properly, need to run into the container. So I think the question is more if you could manage uh, independently fusion. Uh, maybe I can up at some point, but the point that th we really care to smooth all the, the integration. So the best way to use fusion is somehow automatic manner using, using wave. But in some specific cases, it's also possible to use in a manual manner. Excellent. Well, give it up again for Paolo.